Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Today we are going to learn about the systemic circulation. Systemic circulation is the circulation of blood from the heart to all the tissues of the body and from all the tissues of the body back to the heart. That is what we call systemic circulation. Uh, going to start it from the first slide. Uh, this is the first slide. In this slide, we can see that uh, this is heart, this is the right atrium, this is the left atrium, this is the right ventricle, and this is the left ventricle of the heart. From the left ventricle of the heart, what arise? Uh, the main blood vessel, which is responsible for the systemic circulation, that is called aorta. Aorta arise. Aorta arise from the left ventricle of the heart. Uh, this is aorta. I'm going to write its name because I will. Uh, I will label all the diagram. Uh, aorta. The aorta has three main parts. This is the ascending aorta. This part of the aorta is called ascending aorta. This is this part of the aorta is called aortic arc. This is aortic arc. Aortic arc is the part of the aorta which is in the shape of arc. And the third part of the aorta, this one, this is the descending aorta, uh, which goes posteriorly uh, from the heart. Okay, now coming towards this one. Uh, in this slide, we can see that from the ascending aorta, the first arteries which arise from the ascending aorta are the coronary arteries this is the right coronary artery and this is the left coronary artery coronary arteries are responsible for supply of blood to the heart especially to the myocardium especially to the cardiac muscles so the right coronary artery is responsible for supply of blood to the right side of the heart and the left coronary artery is responsible for supply of blood to the left side of the heart especially the myocardium uh, i am going to write its name coronary artery the right coronary artery then left coronary artery so which arise from the ascending aorta the second one is the aortic arc from the aortic arc what arise three types of blood vessels arise from the aortic arc the from the very left side of the aortic arc this one the left brachial artery arise this left brachial artery is responsible for supply of blood to the left upper limb you can say that this is responsible for su supply of blood to the left arm. So I'm going to write uh, its name. A left brachial artery. Left brachial artery, the very left one. Uh, and then we have the common carotid artery. This is the common carotid artery which supply the middle one, which supply blood to the brain and facial region the common carotid artery uh, the third one this one the very left one the very right one uh, this is this is called brachiocephalic artery brachiocephalic artery is responsible for supply of blood to the brain as well as to the right arm to the right upper limb actually the brachiocephalic artery is having two branches now this the first branch this one this is called the right brachial artery and this branch this is called the common carotid artery this is also the common carotid artery as i have told you in the middle one um, actually two types of common carotid arteries are there which uh, the one of the common carotid artery arises directly from the aortic arc this is the common carotid artery and another type of common carotid artery which arises from the brachiocephalic uh, branch of the aortic arc so uh, this is both of these common carotid artery the right common carotid artery and the common carotid artery is responsible for supply of blood to the brain and upper region uh, about the neck so and now coming toward the next one in this slide we can see that uh, from the descending aorta from the thoracic region of the descending aorta you can say from thoracic aorta so from the thoracic aorta a large number of blood vessels arise 
large number of blood vessels arise and la these large number of blood vessels which arise from uh, from the thoracic aorta that is called intercostal artery intercostal arteries so intercostal uh, arteries are responsible for supply of blood to the internal intercostal muscles of the ribs and external intercostal muscles of the ribs internal intercostal muscles and external intercostal muscles are used continuously by the ribs uh, for inhalation and exhalation uh, that is used in respiration so uh, that is, uh, require continuous and large uh, amount of blood uh, and energy so that large amount of blood and energy supplied continuously by the intercostal arteries which arise from the in from the thoracic aorta large number of intercostal so the these intercostal arteries also responsible for supply of blood to the uh, to the pleura the fluid are the layer above the lungs so the intercostal arteries also supply blood to the fluid as well as to the intercostal muscles now coming towards the next one uh, this artery the artery which arise from the uh, from the descending aorta from the thoracic aorta uh, this is called esophageal artery esophageal artery is also an artery which is responsible esophageal esophageal artery esophageal artery is responsible for supply of blood to the esophagus it's a very small artery uh, the next one the artery which arises from the junction of the uh, thorax and abdomen uh, you can say uh, above the junction of the thorax and abdominal region so but it comes in the thoracic aorta uh, from two blood vessels arise right, the right one and the left one the right phrenic artery and the left phrenic artery i'm going to write its name phrenic artery phrenic artery is responsible for the supply of blood to the uh, diaphragm uh, this, that is also continuously used in the respiration so in an inhalation and exhalation process this uh, phrenic artery also uh, have a major role so this supply blood to the diaphragm that uh, help in the respiration and now the very important one this one this is called the celiac trunk the most important artery of the descending aorta and very large diameter aorta large diameter artery of the descending aorta that is called celiac trunk celiac trunk is the largest uh, artery uh, which arises from descending aorta and this celiac trunk um, supply blood to the three organs i'm going to show you to the stomach to the liver and to the spleen the blood vessel which supply blood to the actually this celiac trunk has three main branches the first branch which supply blood to the gastric region or to the stomach that is called what uh, that is called that is called gastric artery gastric artery the second one which supply blood to the liver that is called hepatic artery the third one which supply blood to the spleen that is called splenic artery so the celiac trunk is very important one the, i will show you its role in the hepatic portal circulation also later but uh, this celiac trunk is responsible for supply of blood to the uh, this to the gastric uh, portion to the stomach liver and spleen now coming toward the next one uh, this is also very important everyone is very important every blood vessel is very important but this has also a major role in the hepatic portal circulation also i will show you in the next lecture about hepatic portal circulation but and this uh, this is the superior mesenteric artery superior mesenteric artery and inferior mesenteric artery superior mesenteric artery and inferior mesenteric artery uh, supply blood you you should know about the mesenteric artery that all the mesenteric artery superior whether that is superior or inferior that supply blood to the intestine 
So some part of the intestine is supplied by the superior mesenteric artery and some part of the intestine is supplied blood by the, the inferior mesenteric artery. But to, to which actual part of the intestine I'm going to show you. In this diagram, you will see it very clearly that, uh, for example, uh, this is the digestive system. This is the stomach. From this area, the small intestine starts. This is the duodenum, first part of the small intestine. This is the jejunum, second part of the small intestine. And this is the idiom, the third part of the small intestine. And uh, from this area, the large intestine starts. Uh, this is the idiosecal junction. And this is the ascending colon. This is the transverse colon. This is the descending colon. This is the sigmoidal colon. And this is the rectum. And the last part is anal part. So, uh, to which part of the small and large intestine the, uh, it's the superior and inferior mesenteric artery supply the blood the superior mesenteric artery supply blood to the upper and right side of the intestines to upper and right side that is responsible for supply of blood by the superior mesenteric artery half the uh, the duodenum the jejunum and this part the ascending colon and the transverse colon you, you can see that these are the upper parts of this upper and right part of the small and large intestine the duodenum the jejunum the ascending colon and the transverse colon is supplied by which by by this blood vessel by the superior mesenteric artery superior mesenteric artery supply blood to the duodenum to the jejunum to the uh, ascending colon and to the transverse colon I'm going to write them uh, first of all this is the second one I'm going to show you the second one the inferior mesenteric artery supply blood to the descending colon sigmoidal colon to the rectum and to the ileum you should know about this that the descending colon is responsible sorry the, the inferior mesenteric artery is responsible for supply of blood to the right lower part of the intestine right lower part of the intestine contain the descending colon the ileum the sigmoidal colon and the rectum so i'm going to write them you should be now quite clear about this point that it supply blood to the duodenum duodenum the ileum the jejunum the ascending colon and the transverse colon so the superior mandatory artery is responsible for supply of blood to the uh, ileum to the jejunum duodenum ascending colon and transverse colon and now the inferior mesenteric artery inferior mesenteric artery is responsible for supply of blood to the uh, descending colon sigmoidal colon rectum and I L E U M ileum. You should not write it as I L I U M. That is another term. term. This is I L E U M ileum. So the ileum and rectum and sigmoidal colon and descending colon is supplied blood by the uh, by what by the uh, inferior mesenteric artery. So this is what we call inferior mesenteric artery. Now the next one. This is below above the inferior mesenteric artery and below the superior mesenteric artery in between the superior mesenteric artery and uh, inferior mesenteric artery there are two types of artery which supply blood to the kidneys and the adrenal gland so uh, the first blood vessel which rises from uh, the um, from the left region uh, that is the uh, the left suprarenal artery the left suprarenal artery so supply blood to the a lipped adrenal gland I'm going to write it lipped suprarenal 
artery. Lip suprarenal artery is responsible for supply of blood to the lip to it, to the lip to adrenal gland. That is also called suprarenal gland. Uh, and then we have the uh, right suprarenal uh, artery. Right suprarenal artery. And then we have the left renal artery. Left renal artery. Left renal artery is responsible for supply of blood to the left uh, what? To the left kidney and the right renal artery. Supply blood to the right kidney. Uh, similarly, uh, below the, uh, I'm going to uh, show you over here that uh, the right kidney is a bit uh, lower than the left one. The left one is a bit upper because over here there is a liver and liver is placed on this uh, kidney. That is why that is a bit lower in position. Uh, now over here you can see that uh, this is the. Uh, Two or two artery which arise from right and left side of the abdominal aorta or hair, and these arteries are called the gonadal artery. These are called gonadal artery. Gonadal artery is responsible for supply of blood to the ovaries and testes, uh, to the reproductive system of the body, to the ovaries and testes. <clears throat> Uh, and then we have over here the, in the abdominal region and the navel region. I will show you, I will tell you where in the navel region there is a bifurcation that is called uh, aortic bifurcation. Aortic bifurcation. Aortic bifurcation is the point where the, um, the abdominal aorta divide into right and left arteries. So this the point where it divides and where the aortic bifurcation occurs, that point is the navel point in a V navel. Uh, you can call it BD button or umbilicus also. So this at the point at the uh, at the point of umbilicus or navel point, the right and left um, bifurcation occur. The right iliac artery and the left iliac artery arise. Now the right iliac artery and left iliac artery this should not be written as iliac i l e e i l e a c not iliac this is i l i a c iliac artery okay so the right and left iliac artery the right ar iliac artery supply blood to the right lower limb and the left iliac artery supply blood to the left lower limb uh, or the left leg okay and now coming toward the next one uh, over here the right iliac artery and left iliac artery uh, give rise to two branches the right uh, the right one gave two branches and the left one gave two branches this is the internal iliac artery this is the internal iliac artery and this is the external iliac artery Internal and external. Internal iliac artery and both sides are there. Iliac artery. Both sides give rise to the internal and external iliac artery. The internal iliac artery stops over here and it supply blood to this region, to the buttock region, to the uh, pelvic girdle region, to the muscles over here in the pelvic girdle, all, all around the pelvic girdle. Uh, so the uh, gluteal muscles and all the muscles over here which are all around the um, pelvic girdle. So the internal iliac artery stops over here and it supply blood to this region, to the iliac region, to the um, uh, to that region, to the pelvic girdle, to the all the tissues all around the pelvic girdle and the pelvic girdle. So uh, and the external iliac artery it's further goes to the um, to which region it goes toward the lower leg so it uh, supply blood to the lower leg to the knee to the calf and shin to the toe it goes and divide and divide until it reaches the toe it until it reaches the um, the fingers of the the, the foot 
so uh, this is responsible for supply of blood to the lower part of the lower limb